Oh, hello there. Have you ever heard that there is a ghost story in the Bible? I thought not. It's not a story that most Sunday school teachers would tell you. But of course, that's what this channel is all about. Talking about those stories that people like to ignore. You could say this channel is kind of like a pathway to hear about stories that some might consider unnatural. Today on, yes, that is something that happened in the Bible, we talk about a story that happened a long time ago in a land far, far away. Unless you are watching this from the Middle East, then at least the long time ago part still applies. Today we look at the time in the Bible when a king was so desperate for answers, he decided to go talk to ghosts. Let's begin. So here's the scene. King of all bros, Saul, knows that his days are numbered. He was the first king that Israel ever had, but he didn't do the best job. You see, he was very much focused on looking good, not necessarily obeying God. And because of that, God declared to him that his family would not continue to rule over Israel. In fact, God had chosen another person to rule after him, a shepherd boy named David. And succession problems wasn't the only thing Saul had to worry about. There's this other group of people called the Philistines, and they live right next door to Israel, and Israel and the Philistines just fought constantly. In fact, there's a really big battle coming up, and Saul was feeling really nervous about it. Now, normally when Saul was nervous about something, there was a dude called Samuel that he could go ask for, because Samuel was a prophet, and he could like get a message directly from God. Samuel was a prophet. There's only one slight issue with Saul going to ask Samuel something, and that is that Samuel's dead. He did! <laughs> Sorry. Saul tries many different ways to try to get a hold of God, but at this point, God's basically blocked Saul's phone number. So with no one else to turn to and getting nothing from God, Saul decides that why let death get in the way of him talking to Samuel? And this is where the fun begins. Saul starts looking for somebody that can talk to ghosts, but the problem is is that he's either kicked out of Israel or killed anybody who could do that or at least claimed that they could. Saul does find somebody though, and it's this witch who lives at this place called Endor. Witch, witch, you're a witch. <laughs> Sorry. And no, there are no Ewoks living nearby. Uh, what? It's Endor in Star Wars? Yeah. Oh, that's what you That's wearing. why, yeah. That's why you're wearing the shirt. That's why I'm wearing the shirt. Oh. Ah. Saul gets in disguise, he goes to Endor to visit the witch, and that brings us... <laughs> what, what? I just like imagine him putting on like a cloak and going, it's like the old, like so fairy tale but really cheesy, and he's just like, can you please tell me the future? And she's like, sus. That takes us to our key verse for today. This is 1 Samuel 28. Verses 12 and 13. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Do not be afraid. What do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a god coming up out of the earth. Scary. Let's unpack this. Wait, a god? Yeah, that's what I want to talk about first, is that word god. In the Hebrew, that word is Elohim. And... Honestly, it just means more like spiritual being. It's used to describe God. It's the, used to describe gods. It's used to in reference to angels. And here it's referencing whatever it is that's coming up out of the ground that this witch sees. And that is the part that has been debated for like forever. People usually fall into three main camps. The first camp is that the woman is just a con woman. The second one is that this is some kind of spirit that is there trying to trick them. And the third is that it's Samuel. The first camp, the reason why the idea that she might be just trying to trick Saul is that when the Old Testament was translated into the Greek, the Greek translators translated witch to ventriloquist. What? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what? So in other words, they would have said that the witch was like whoopee at the beginning of Ghost and she's just faking it. Second, 
The second group, like I said, see that this might have been some kind of either demon or spirit sent from God that isn't Samuel, but like kind of claims that it is Samuel in defense of what their position is that whatever it is never actually says that it's Samuel. It just gives a message. It just talks to Saul. The third camp is that it was literally Samuel himself. He was called back to the land of the living to talk to Saul one last time. Personally, I go with option C. One of the reasons I believe this is that the Bible just straight up calls it Samuel. Like it doesn't say it looks like Samuel or it might be Samuel. It just says like, oh, this is Samuel. The second thing is that the spirit gives Saul a prophecy. It actually tells Saul that in the battle that's gonna happen the next day against the Philistines, him and his sons are going to die. And that comes true. Samuel as a prophet was known for basically predicting a lot of things. Like he had an immaculate track record for predicting things that were going to happen. So no matter what view you hold, Saul, after hearing this, he, he faints, he passes out. And the next Cause, day- Cause duh, it's scurry. Cause duh, it's scurry. And the next day he goes into battle and after getting mortally wounded, he ends up killing himself so that he won't be tortured by his enemies. What? The end. Uh, there's so much you left out. That's a story for another day. So what are some things that we can pull from this story that apply to us today? First, you can't fight God. If he declares that something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Second, God can communicate to us in many ways. God can do whatever he wants. And number three, if you're going to visit a witch at Endor, just know it's a trap. Thanks for watching. If you don't agree with me or you hold to one of the other views, I'd love to hear about that. Leave a comment below and let me know why. In a nice way, please. He's my husband and I love him and I'm very protective. Uh, I am now over 100 subscribers and it's all because of you guys who watch these videos and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It just means so much and it can help this channel a lot. Please leave a comment and like this video. It does help. Uh, cause these videos to be shown to other people, which helps the channel grow. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. And may the force be with you.